Well, one of the most active volcanoes in the world sits just a few hundred miles off the U.S. West Coast, and some scientists believe that it's really only a matter of time before it erupts again, maybe even before the end of 2025. It sits just off the West Coast, but it's also behind us this morning. The Axial Seamount, it's a submarine volcano. So get this, it rises about 3,500 feet above the surrounding seafloor in the Pacific Ocean, and it sits on one of Earth's many tectonic plate boundaries where the Earth is quite literally spreading apart. It's pretty wild that we also have a volcano that's just well, sitting there. So with the headlines last week and this week even reading that an eruption could be imminent, should we be concerned? Well, Bill Chadwick is a research associate from Oregon State University. He's an expert on these types of volcanoes. Bill, thank you for joining us. You've actually studied the Axial Seamount quite a bit. So how do you know that an eruption could happen soon? And is it something that as humans we need to concern ourselves with? Uh, yeah, so the we don't need to worry about uh, the eruption out at Axial at all. Uh, it's it's not any threat to humans, so I want to be clear about that. It's it's not going to cause a tsunami or uh, create earthquakes along the coast, so we don't have to worry about that. Why it's of interest is that it has a very repeatable uh, pattern between one eruption and the next, and we're trying to use that pattern to see if we can forecast eruptions um, days or weeks or months in advance, uh, which is hard to do on land. Generally, volcanoes on land that are well monitored, uh, they, they give some indication of a coming eruption only hours to days before it occurs. And it's basically when the magma or molten rock is on its way to the surface. And um, so we're trying to experiment with this volcano that seems pretty well behaved in that it's got this repeatable pattern to see uh, how far out we can uh, forecast an eruption. And so it's really a natural laboratory. It's What's uh, really useful to us is that it's very active. It's uh, If it's not erupting, it's getting ready for the next eruption. And there have been three eruptions in the last 30 years. So, uh, and it's, it's very well monitored. There's a a cable that goes from shore all the way out there. And so we can actually look at real time data. So on my laptop, I can see data that was collected there 10 minutes ago, which is really mm -hmm. remarkable. Yeah, and Bill, you mentioned just how active it really is. We know eruptions at Axial are more frequent because it's located on a plate boundary and also over a hot spot. Yeah. So can you explain how those two factors contribute to its status as the most active volcanic site in the Northeast Pacific? Right. So, uh, so right. It's on a plate boundary where the plates are moving apart. So there's volcanic activity all up and down that boundary. But in most places, it's not very frequent. Maybe every ten to hundred years, we think. Uh, but it's also uh, over a hot spot, and a hot spot is a point source. It's a uh, where magma is coming up from the mantle in one spot. So there's hot spots. Uh, under Hawaii and Iceland, and that's why those places are so active. So it's got the two things going on, being on the plate boundary and the hotspot. So it has a bigger magma supply than anywhere else uh, on the Juan de Fuca Ridge. That's the, the name of the plate boundary that it's on. And um, yeah, so that's why it's it's pretty much has a continuous supply of magma. And so it's uh, between eruptions, the reservoir under the volcano is filling up with magma, and that's what we're measuring. Um, we're measuring the seafloor actually rising as the volcano fills with magma. And then during an eruption, when the, a lot of that magma is erupted on the seafloor as lava, uh, then the seafloor goes back down. So it's this up and down, kind of like a balloon inflating and deflating, and that's the pattern that we've got our eye on. And there's also lots of earthquakes that uh, occur yeah. in the buildup to an eruption. And so we're watching those very carefully, too. Uh, studying volcanoes is just so interesting. And I know you've dedicated a part of your life's work to these submarine volcanoes. And, and when you consider, I think of, you know, the, the traditional volcanoes, they look like a cone. I know that there are different types. I think Axial is more of a, a shield volcano. So when the headlines read, this thing's blowing up like a balloon or a mile-long volcano, um, is that true? It, it, can, can you make the argument that for several miles along this stretch, this maybe fissure, we could, we could have an eruption? And, and what type of eruption are we talking? I mean, I know it's under 
water, so explosives seems a bit of a reach. Right. It's uh, it's not going to be explosive. That's it's a very benign <laughs> thing. That's that's the good news. <laughs> uh, this volcano is more like the ones in Hawaii or Iceland, <clears throat> so it has uh, very fluid lava that's erupted when an eruption happens. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah. So there's no no big uh, explosions. <clears throat> And uh, in fact, if you were on a ship right over the volcano when it was erupting, you probably wouldn't even know it was happening because wow. it's a mo about a mile deep um, and uh, nothing would be happening at the surface. Uh, you know, if you, if you lowered an underwater microphone into the water, you'd probably hear the commotion on the bottom, but that would be the only indication. <clears throat> so it's very benign, but the... Uh, Lots of lava comes out um, in the, the 2015 eruption, which was the last time it erupted. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. No, uh, Bill, I, I, everything that you, you were saying, it's uh, it's just so fascinating to, to know. I mean, these research expeditions, which you have led, which thank you for letting us see some of the video uh, that continues. We'll have to we'll have to talk more once yeah. this thing begins to to erupt. It's, it's quite fascinating. We're working up against the clock this morning, but we thank you for your time. Oregon State University Research Associate uh, Bill Chadwick there. Thanks again.